Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Fahad Ansari and I'm here to help you conquer chemistry. So in this video we will be looking at relative molecular mass first of all. So let's jump right into it. So relative molecular mass, also known as MR, is defined as the mass of a molecule relative to a twelfth of the mass of an atom of the carbon-12 isotope. You've seen this kind of definition before, right? I mean, hopefully you did watch the previous video on relative atomic mass. If you didn't, you should watch it first. So this is basically the same thing, but instead of considering atoms, we're considering molecules of compounds or elements. Um, so for example, if we were to plot on uh, this scale in atomic mass units, the masses of atoms or molecules, for example, we have uh, the mass of the carbon-12 isotope plotted somewhere over here, which is given a mass of 12 AMU or 12 units. So if we were to find the relative molecular mass of a molecule, for example, water, good old H2O. So for this, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the periodic table and find the mass numbers or relative atomic masses of the elements hydrogen and oxygen, right? So, so over here we have hydrogen right up here with a mass number of 1. And for oxygen right here, we have a mass number of 16, right? So now all we need to do is just add them up. Simple, right? So two atoms of hydrogen in the formula. This is going to be multiplied by 1.0, the relative atomic mass of hydrogen plus you're going to add to it 16.0 which is the mass number of oxygen it's only added once because you only have one oxygen atom in this formula so this gives you 18.0 so if i were to plot it on the scale so um, it is heavier than a carbon 12 isotopes atom but uh, not by much just by six units right so you can plot masses of molecules as well as atoms on this AMU scale. So you can compare their masses relative to each other. Now relative formula mass is the same thing. It's also MR. Uh, the only difference is the difference in words. So instead of relative molecular mass, I called it relative formula mass. So this is the same exact thing as MR, relative molecular mass. The only difference is we use this term for ionic compounds right ionic compounds if you haven't studied bonding yet basically these ionic compounds generally consist of a metal and a non-metal right so a compound that ex uh, consists of a metal and a non-metal uh, we will use the term formula mass and not molecular mass right? It has something to do with bonding. I'm not going to go into the details of that. So for example, for this compound over here, aluminium oxide, I have aluminium over here, which has a relative atomic mass of 27. For oxygen, we saw earlier, we have a relative atomic mass of 16. So now what we do is 2 times 27, because we have two aluminiums, plus 3 times 16, because we have three oxygens, this is going to give us 102. Now this is a much bigger mass than the mass of a simple carbon-12 atom, right? So this is how you find relative formula mass for an ionic compound consisting of a metal like aluminium and a non-metal like oxygen, right? Same method as molecular mass, just a difference in the wording. Now, next up, we're going to be discussing the mole. No, not not no, not you, not you. Uh, I'm not talking about you. Go go bury it away in your hole. We're talking about the chemical mole. The mole is defined as the quantity of a substance containing approximately this yay big number, 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23. That's a lot to read particles of that substance, right? Now this uh, fancy looking number over here has a fancy name as well. It's called the Avogadro's number. 
symbolized by L. And uh, in case you're wondering, this cool dude was called Avogadro. He came up with this idea. So, the mass of a substance containing one mole, or 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 particles, uh, of that particular substance is known as its molar mass, right? And this is in grams per mole. So in case you didn't understand what molar mass means, let me give you some examples. So for a monatomic substance, the molar mass is just the AR of the substance in grams, right? So for example, we have neon over here. We know that neon does exist as single atoms. It is monatomic, exists as single atoms, individual atoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to take its AR, or the mass number from the periodic table, which is 20.2, and we're just going to slap on the unit grams. So this means that 20.2 grams uh, basically consists of one mole of neon atoms. So this is grams per mole of neon atoms, right? So 20.2 grams of neon contains 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 neon atoms, all right? Similarly, for magnesium and uh, metals in general, we consider them to exist as single atoms, consider them to be monatomic, take the AR, 24.3, and slap on the unit grams. This is the mass of magnesium that you need for one mole of magnesium atoms. And this mass actually contains 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 magnesium atoms. All right. And for a substance that exists as molecules or formula units, right? Uh, we will consider the molar mass to be equal to the MR in grams. So we calculate the molar mass of H2O, uh, the MR, which was 18, slap on the unit grams, and this is the mass that contains 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 H2O molecules. All right? So we're not talking about atoms anymore, we're talking about molecules now. And the molar mass of Al2O3 is equal to its MR, the formula mass, because this is an ionic compound, slap on the unit grams, and this is the mass that contains one mole, or 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 units of Al2O3. All right? Now, for the big one, conversions. We have discussed mass, we have discussed moles, we have discussed number of particles. All right, so now how do we convert between them? So for that, what we're going to do is if you want to go from mass to moles, you simply divide by molar mass. All right, so if you divide the mass by the molar mass, you will get moles. And if you want to convert back, you just multiply by molar mass. So you do the opposite thing, all right? And if you want to convert from moles to number of particles, you just multiply by Avogadro's number. And if I want to go back from number of particles to moles, I just divide by L, which is Avogadro's number again, right? So quick examples. So 71 grams of Cl2. Now Cl2 is a molecule, so its molar mass is basically going to be the MR, or molecular mass, of chlorine. And uh, the AR of chlorine from the periodic table is 35.5. So this will be 2 times 35.5. That will give us 71.0 grams. This is molar mass, 71.0 grams per mole of chlorine molecules. So now if I want to convert this mass into moles, I simply do this operation over here right? So I had 71 grams. I divide 71 by 71, which is basically the molar mass, and I get one mole, right? And if I want to convert this into number of molecules of chlorine, multiply by L, the Avogadro's number, this gives me 6.02 into 10 to the power of 23 Cl2 molecules, 
all right uh, now what if instead we had moles right you have 2.50 moles of mgo magnesium oxide so first takes first find the molar mass so the molar mass over here is going to be the formula mass because this is an ionic compound it consists of a metal magnesium and a non-metal oxygen so the mass number of magnesium is 24.3 for oxygen it is 16 find this out from the periodic table and we get 24.3 plus 16 that gives me 40.3 grams per mole right now i have 2.5 moles already so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply 2.5 by the molar mass right so this is going to be 2.5 times 40.3 and this turns out to be 100.75 grams of magnesium oxide and if i want to convert this into number of units of magnesium oxide remember instead of molecules i'm going to use the term units or formula units of this ionic compound so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply by this avogadro's number and this is going to give me uh, basically 2.5 times L, or Avogadro's number, this gives me 1.505 into 10 to the power of 24 MgO formula units. Alright, so I think that's enough conversions for today. And uh, this was basically the, an introduction to the mole concept. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Conquer Chemistry. Inshallah, I will see you in the next video.